Oh, okay. So I see it rock and rolling. Okay, we're <clears throat> hey, we're one minute after nine, and if uh, you guys are excited about road retraining like I am, you just don't want to waste another minute, right? So uh, let's let's get rock and rolling. It's nine o'clock in the morning on a on a Saturday, and and here we are. Okay, so uh, today's uh, training is going to be talking about um, hybrid meetings. Now, some of our clubs have already launched out on this, uh, and we got some people here on the call today that are going to share their experience uh, with that. Um, we have some clubs like our club that are trying to figure out uh, how we're gonna do that. Uh, and so that's uh, who this call or is for, is for people that are trying to figure that out or maybe just want some additional resources on it. Now, if uh, those of you guys who are gonna be present and elect to come through bets, um, you know that uh, there's a, just a whole swarm of information on how to do hybrid meetings uh, that uh, RI has put out. And um, Naomi is gonna go over that today, um, just to kind of connect you in with the RI resources. Um, and then we're gonna feature basically some clubs um, uh, that are starting in on the process, um, uh, some clubs who, who haven't, who are just sort of thinking about it, uh, because we wanna make sure that um, at the end of this meeting, uh, my goal is that everybody uh, at least has an idea of how they might put that together and is able to link in with some of the resources that are available uh, to make that happen. So that's what, uh, that's what our plan is for today. So um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to start out and we're going to start going through uh, some of our speakers that we've, we've lined up. Uh, then we're going to take a, a quick little um, break uh, right in the middle of it. And then we're going to come back and just basically have a discussion uh, amongst the people that are on the call uh, so that um, you can share your particular situation, um, what kinds of challenges uh, you might have, um, where you think you'd like to go with this because, uh, you know, 52 clubs spread out across the state. Uh, we've got uh, people all the way on one end of the spectrum uh, that have, a, you know, 100 members and a professional setup. Uh, you're going to hear that from Brian today, uh, all the way down to, you know, clubs that have like six people and a laptop. So somewhere along that uh, continuum, uh, there lies your club. And so we're going to be here today to, to kind of address that. So I actually want to start the morning off today um, with Nathan Graves. Uh, now, Nathan, as you know, is, um, is uh, with the uh, Rotary Club of Waikiki. Now, his club is actually not doing... Uh, hybrid meetings yet, but they're in the process of trying to figure out how to do it. And so I wanted to start there. And then from there, um, I'm going to pass it on to Naomi, who's going to share with us all the resources that Rotary International has. So um, uh, Nathan, you can unmute yourself and uh, rock and roll wherever you are. Uh, thanks, you are. Benson. And, yeah, there uh, you are. Thank you all. And I'm in a very similar situation at the Rotary Club of Waikiki thinking like a lot of you about this transition, how we want to do it and some of the options available. I'll share my screen briefly here with you and just talk about some of the things that I came up with. Here's a nice example of a hybrid meeting that all of our meetings are going to look this tech fancy <laughs> and nice for us when we get going. Now, we all know there's going to be some technological struggles and that's why Benson as our district trainers put together this team of people we're going to be able to help and, and I throw myself out there if your club is struggling with the technology uh, sometimes it's not about being the expert but it's just having an extra year to, to walk you through it and kind of get through some of those sticky points uh, but I think overall the message that that I wanted to send and the things that our club is thinking about is embracing this kind of digital hybrid model and you know we all know the value of getting back in person those personal connections the mentorship uh, the lifelong friendships, the service that Rotary brings. But there are also some pretty big advantages to embracing the digital side, whether that be remaining somewhat on Zoom or going to a hybrid model. And one of those is obviously work schedules. You know, when you do a Zoom meeting, you block out an hour. When you do an in-person meeting, you block out two and a half hours to drive there, to park, to drive back to the office or back home and park. With a Zoom, you can do it just one hour uh, which adds a huge work schedule balance to somebody's life. The other is travel schedules. You know, when you leave uh, town, we have a lot of snowbirds who maybe spend 
you know, four or five months here, but they want to be engaged with their club year round. But we have a lot of younger people that travel a lot, but they want to be engaged with their club while they travel. Zoom or a hybrid meeting allows you to stay engaged when you're traveling. Caregiving is a big one. You know, nowadays, a lot of Rotarians, they go in Rotary, they have kids. It's very hard for them to have somebody watch their kids than get to a meeting in person. Um, with Zoom, you can mute it. It doesn't matter. You turn off the video, you can be a full-time parent and a full-time Rotarian or a hybrid model. In-person doesn't always allow you to do that. Attracting younger membership, I think that's another one. A lot of younger people don't have the flexibility in their work schedule that maybe older Rotarians do. Maybe their boss will let them take an hour lunch, but not a two and a half hour lunch. So do you want your club to be able to accommodate those people? These are all the things that our club is starting to think about how do we present a model that can attract these sorts of people while not giving up what we used to have in the in-person space? And amazing speakers. You can bring in speakers from all over the world. We have at our club, everyone's welcome to join Wednesday at noon, the Rotary Club of Waikiki, a guy who's one of the experts on Disney history from California coming in. He's going to tell us all about the history of Disney. You don't always have those local experts on every subject, uh, but if you bring them in Zoom or you bring them in hybrid, you're able to to take advantage of those speakers. The next one is just some ideas that I've, I've talked to other clubs about, some of the things they're thinking about, some of the things our club is thinking about. One is the weekly, weekly hybrid meeting, and Brian's gonna talk about that from a technology standpoint. And there is some technology that goes into it. So you have to think, is this the best option for us to offer a weekly hybrid meeting, both in-person and virtual? is another idea to alternate between live and Zoom meetings, uh, is another idea to do Zoom meetings with a monthly Palhama in person. So you maintain some level of engagement live and some level of engagement Zoom. And the other opportunity that I think we should be thinking about, I think District Governor Naomi is gonna talk about is collaborating with other clubs. It doesn't have to be that you do the entire thing as a small club. There's so many clubs around the district that would love to collaborate for events. Uh, and then the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with here, and especially for some of those clubs that are anxious to get back in person, is I would really think about your club's strengths. And, you know, if you're going to abandon the Zoom model altogether or don't want to do the hybrid and want to be in person, you know, this is a quote from uh, the former CEO of Goldman Sachs where he says, you could be very successful person. You can be difficult to work with and narrow-minded, but you better be very, very, very good at what you do if you're gonna do that. So I think the message is if you're gonna be 100% Zoom, you should be really, really good at Zoom. If you're gonna be 100% in person and you wanna be done with the Zoom as a club, then you should be a really good club at engaging in person because to go back to the old way of doing things, if you're not really good at it, it's going to be tough to attract membership and retain membership. And um, so I'm really where you guys are at in the process, trying to figure out which of these models or a mixture of is best for our club. Uh, but these are some of the things we're thinking about. And I'll turn it back over to you to Benson. <clears throat> see, this is why I, like, I, I love to get Nathan involved in this, right? So, you know, you see a young guy like Nathan that's sharp, articulate, you know, can get across an idea. And then you really have hope like, hey man, this thing is gonna go in the right direction because we get guys like like Nathan. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> when, when I tried to engage him, he goes, oh, you know, our club isn't really on hybrid meetings. I said, hey, Nathan, it doesn't matter. I mean, you are you guys are thinking about it. Uh, if you have some stuff you wanna share with us, that's that's super awesome. So, you know, round of applause for Nathan. Nathan. Um, okay, so now uh, next uh, speaker up, uh, our uh, district governor, uh, Naomi Masuna is going to talk a little bit about um, hybrid resources that uh, RI has, and that's actually out there that all of us can click into. So, okay, Naomi, you're on. Thank you, and thank you, Nathan. That was pretty good. That was very good. But, you know, as Nathan says, the hybrid meetings are here to stay, and Rotarians really got used to saving time, saving money with the Zoom meetings. And when you think about member engagement, you know, we need to continue to consider what the members want and what you need to do to attract new members. So a lot of um, options on the meeting types, you know, you could have a satellite group or small group meeting on Sunday afternoon instead of uh, your regular meeting or at night is thinking about the member engagement and what do we need to do to um, give that value proposition to our members 
and to attract new members. So there are many options on meeting types, and I really encourage you to be open to being flexible and innovative. You know, last year at PEPS, uh, the, the PEs got some training on this thing called design thinking to find solutions. And so I want you to really think about uh, when you look for solutions to think about the user's point of view, what do they want and then find the solutions to that. Uh, sometimes you're limited to what you can do, but if you can try and look at it from the user's point of view, that would be great. So there's a lot of resources you can check out. And speaking of resources, okay, so Benson has this thing called the library. And so I wanted to share my screen on the library. Okay, so you're going to the training library. Okay, click on the library. And then you have these books. So this latest book is Hybrid Meeting Tips. So when you go to the hybrid meeting tips, here you're gonna find some attachments for um, how to set up the hybrid meetings, how to host it, um, Zoom tips, you know, if you, you still need to get uh, some Zoom tips and technology, but there's also the support team. So the zone support team, if you're not able to get a, a district supporter, support team member, you can go to the zone so Zone 2627 is uh, putting together a lot of teams to help us with, um, uh, with these resources that are specializing in certain things. So the Zone Support Team list is right here, okay? But there's a video, I'm gonna share this short video, it's two minutes about- This is a quick start guide for running a- About um, uh, running a, a in-person meeting. So here we go. People. We start with our regular club meeting laptop, speaker, projector, and screen. We connect our laptop to our Zoom meeting. Then we plug in a high quality microphone and a webcam facing our in person members and guests. Finally, your president faces their laptop toward themselves, and a Zoom master, in person or virtual, runs the meeting. So in review, all that's needed to run a VIP meeting beyond the laptop, speaker, projector, and screen that most clubs have is a microphone, a webcam, a second laptop for the president, and a third laptop for a Zoom master. And note that the president or Zoom master could be physically present in the meeting or remote connected on Zoom. Now let's provide some detail on the mic and webcam. We recommend a blue Yeti omnidirectional microphone. When centrally located, it can capture audio from anyone speaking in the room and is the only microphone used. We recommend a Logitech C920 webcam given its cost, resolution, and field of view positioned next to the screen. Now let's provide some detail on Zoom settings for the three laptops. The club laptop must be configured in Zoom to use the external webcam and microphone. The president's laptop should have its microphone on mute and audio off. The Zoom master should also have their microphone on mute and audio off. Finally, the club laptop should be set to speaker view within Zoom and the president should be on Zoom speaker view. The magic in this setup is that the webcam and mic allow remote participants to see and hear all in-person members, and in-person members can see remote Zoom participants on the screen. Proper placement of the webcam and mic allow anyone in person to step forward facing the webcam and screen and speak to all virtual participants while also being seen on the screen by in-person participants. If a club wants to accommodate more than 50 or even 100 people, depending upon the number of Zoom participants, a more sophisticated configuration can be used. A printable summary of this quick start configuration is available for download on our website. Okay, so that uh, quick start um, guide is on that page for hybrid meetings. 
And this was just um, a suggestion on configuration. Of course, you're going to use um, different uh, configurations and different equipment depending on uh, your venue and what you have available. Um, but you know, basically it's, it's that configuration. So uh, we'll hear from other um, speakers on some tips on uh, having a successful uh, hybrid meeting. Back to you, Benson. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, thanks, Naomi. So, um, you know, if you guys want to uh, click on uh, the, that piece in our um, in our district, uh, our training library, there's enough stuff in there so you could watch hours and hours and hours of stuff on um, how to put together uh, a hybrid meeting. There's actually uh, documents and stuff that are that are in there. Um, <clears throat> what I want to uh, try to do because we have almost 50 people on the call, uh, I know that. Some of you were watching that thing going, there's, there's no way I can do that. Or I, I, what was that that they were just talking about? So um, if you have questions about it, um, please try to log, uh, log them. Yeah, okay, see, like Janice already figured that one out. So uh, put your questions um, uh, in the chat. And uh, when our speakers are done, then we'll go through and uh, try to address uh, those questions. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so the, the next person I want to uh, turn the meeting over to is, um, is Brian Kunkel, and Brian is with the uh, Rotary Club of Honolulu. Uh, now, they're, they're sort of at the upper end of the spectrum because they have uh, skilled people and they have um, uh, equipment and technology to do it. So uh, I'm going to let him talk a little bit about uh, his particular situation, what they're doing. Okay, Brian, it's on to you. There we go. I forgot okay. I was muted two different ways. <laughs> yeah, um, no, so no thank you, Benson. Uh, as Benson mentioned, um, the Rotary Club of Honolulu, we have um, several advantages that we know not all of the Rotary Clubs in the district have. One of them being, not to toot my own horn, but I have been learning how to use things like Zoom for the last decade and a half, because that's what I do professionally. I used to do training remotely. I have since worked on various consulting projects. I'm in software uh, consulting, software engineering, um, and I've been working on remote projects for uh, more than a decade, actually. Um, so when this thing happened, um, you know, we had uh, folks like our president, Rich Proctor, who jumped right on the, okay, we need to have Zoom, and um, we had myself, we had lots of experience, and we had, uh, we have a a club uh, administrator who was able to sort of get those things set up for us and, you know, do the paperwork and get everything in place. So we had Zoom meetings like a week after everything shut down, essentially. Um, and so we've had a, a good run of figuring out how to do Zoom. Obviously, we knew how to do in person. And then going into the hybrid situation, again, because of the, the, the advantages that we have, um, you know, we were able to find a good venue that had a good, um, uh, for our first most recent uh, hybrid meeting that we did was quite successful, which unfortunately, of course, sets the bar really high for the next one and the next one after that. Um, but, <clears throat> but we found a venue that had a really good sound system built into the location. We worked with Richard Ma from Presentation Resources to set up the technology for the video and audio within the room. Um, he and I took a fair bit of time to sort of prep the, the plan for how to coordinate the in-person with the Zoom. Um, I was running the Zoom, he was running the physical. Um, we also had Martha, our club administrator, you know, letting people into the Zoom meeting. And so there was a, a really, you know, a team of people that was in, in <clears throat> you know, making this thing as good a success as it was, which is not to say that you need to have that sort of level of, of commitment um, to be able to do a successful hybrid meeting, but that's sort of the, the high bar that, uh, you know, that, that picture that you showed uh, Benson was kind of along those lines when you have the sort of professional resources and, and people who really kind of are comfortable doing it and can just, you know, crank it out. Um, but some of the things that sort of go into that, that everybody can be uh, aware of and paying attention to that I think is important is um, really kind of approaching it with a, <clears throat> an attitude of how can we make this hybrid meeting a good experience for both sides, right? If you're gonna do a hybrid um, scenario, like you were saying, like Naomi was mentioning, um, you're gonna to wanna to do both sides of it so that both parts of the meeting 
feel like a good experience. So we've had lots of clubs that have been doing Zoom and many of whom I'm sure have sort of gotten used to it and they, they do good experiences in Zoom. You want that to not degrade because part of it is now in person. Similarly on the in-person side, you don't want to have the people who are in the room wherever your venue is, you know, I can't hear or I can't see the folks that are on Zoom. So you want to think about both sides of that and you want to try to as much as possible plan for it, um, figure out what possible what's not possible what's your backup plan if something goes wrong with the technology because things will you know and just simple things like think about okay if i'm sitting in the room and we've got a presenter from california talking about the history of disney you know what do i want to be able to experience well, as i'm sitting in the room there right i want to be able to hear the person i want to be able to see the person i want to be able to ask them questions you know i saw a question in the chat you know what about the people on zoom being able to chat so if you can have someone like the in the slide pre or the video presentation you've got someone who's like a zoom master who's there in the room that can say to the person on zoom hey i've got a question from in the room type it in the chat or whatever. Um, planning those things, just having those um, resources ready and available if you can, that's gonna make the, the best experience, I think. Um, and, you know, I've heard a couple of uh, comments from different clubs who, you know, various members have different experiences with Zoom. I know for our club, there are people who are like, I am not coming back to hang out with you guys until you're back at our old room, Monarch Room in the Royal Hawaiian. You know, that's when you're there, let me know. And, you know, we're not there yet because the Royal Hawaiian isn't able to open up yet. Um, so, you know, those people, they're sort of one category. And similarly, you've got people who are like, you know, now that we can go back physically somewhere, I'm never doing Zoom again. I'm not going on the Zoom meeting ever again. If you people want to do Zoom, you do it over there. We're going to be over here. The cool people are over here. The other people are over there. Um, so, you know, when you find yourself in a situation like that, um, what you really, I think, really want to focus on is either making sure that even when the experiences are different, they're both valuable to the people who are, you know, wanting them, right? So if I want to stay home and, or if I'm in California and I want to log in through Zoom, I want that Zoom experience to be good. If I'm in person, but the speaker is on Zoom, I want to be able to, you know, I want to experience that in a, in a way that works for me. So thinking about both sides of them coming together and both being not equal, but equally valid, equally good is important. And then to, if you can't do that, then I really think that sometimes, and I'm going to bring out a little bit of heresy here, um, you might want to consider, you know, kind of separating into, you know, this club does only Zoom and this club does only in person and, you know, people kind of self-select into those clubs. If that's something that's in incredibly important to the majority of your members, then maybe you don't do hybrid, right? Maybe you only do Zoom or maybe you only do in person, but if you do want the hybrid experience, your club is sort of open and, and has the resources to do that. I think from my perspective, the key is really putting the thought, the effort and the resources into making both sides of the experience work for the, the different sides. So that's been my experience. Thank you, Ben. Okay, uh, Brian, I'm sure we're going to come back uh, to you with some questions. I can already see some uh, questions in the chat that are, are going to go to you. So, um, uh, so right now, um, what, I, what, I'd, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, turn it over now to um, uh, Rick Cox. Uh, now, Rick is on Kauai. They were one of the uh, first groups to, uh, to launch out and do uh, hybrid meetings. And um, go ahead, Rick. Okay. Take it away. Yeah, I'm not really sure after seeing all of this, this has been excellent uh, that we you know, really qualify as a hybrid, but um, we're a smaller group. We're about 20 members currently that are fairly reasonably active. Uh, probably had um, uh, maybe 10, 12 people at a meeting. We did um, uh, social distancing. A uh, number of people wore masks most of the time, I would guess. Um, but at the same time, we were a little bit out of the box. Uh, our environment is a little bit unique at uh, the old uh, Nuwila Willi Yacht Club. Uh, it's a second story uh, environment where there's no windows. So it's almost like an open business lanai kind of situation. Um, so it's a kind of free flowing air uh, uh, environment. Um, so it's probably not uh, comparable to some indoor situations. 
Uh, but at the same time, we struggled with uh, Zoom, honestly, um, talking to a number of people. We just didn't have the acoustics and the resources to, to do it right. Uh, the three, three laptops, I mean, that was um, something that we just, it just didn't occur to us. And yet I, I kind of knew in the back of my mind that there was something yeah. we were missing. Um, and, and to have a separate camera, um, I think it's really critical. So um, I think we did kind of a version of all three and, and didn't do it really mm -hmm. well, but um, we, we held it together and, and are looking to improve. Okay, thanks, Rick. So, um, you know, some of uh, everybody out, out there is pointing out, um, th this is really a, a, a transformative <clears throat> process where it's kind of moving a little bit at a time. And so, um, you know, I, I know a lot of clubs that started out uh, in one place uh, as time evolves, uh, they, they figure it out more, they get more technology in there, more people are comfortable with it. And so uh, it's a transformative process, it's kind of moving along and it's kind of like you're, you're building the airplane as you're trying to fly it at the same time. So, um, okay, so our, uh, <clears throat> our last uh, kind of speaker this morning on our panel is our uh, former district governor, uh, Wynn Schoenman. And, uh, they at um, uh, Honolulu Sunset are already doing uh, hybrid meetings. So, uh, Wynn, go, go ahead, um, you know, take it away and explain what you guys are doing. Thank you, Benson. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> I have a, uh, uh, a projection here that I can show you uh, about what we do. Where's the next one? <clears throat> I don't know if everybody can see oh, that. Yeah, okay. Or not. Yeah. I, Can everybody see the picture? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, we got it. So, so we meet at the Waikiki Yacht Club, and the Waikiki Yacht Club has a lot of background noise. <clears throat> we have people walking by. We have boats on the waterfront. We have uh, uh, people serving conversations from other parties uh, in the in the room. <clears throat> so when we started out, we set a couple of goals. One was to provide high quality video and sound. Uh, to our remote viewers from an in-person event. Mm -hmm. And that's very different than being uh, online and presenting and having the people, the in-person group uh, uh, watching mm -hmm. from the monitor in the room. So our requirements is we have two specific operators. We have the Zoom host mm -hmm. and we have a camera operator. We don't put the camera in the front of the room uh, facing the audience. We have it kind of to the side uh, and then we can pan and uh, uh, connect with all of the people uh, that are meeting in person in the room. Uh, critical is a high quality internet connection. Uh, we um, experienced in the Waikiki Yacht Club that uh, their internet connection was sometimes not available uh, and I'm talking Wi-Fi. Uh, it was not available for us also for us to hardwire into their uh, uh, broadband, but uh, so their mm -hmm. Wi-Fi was inconsistent. <clears throat> Can I have a quality video camera or vi video capable digital SLR? So most digital SLR cameras are, are better uh, than a, uh, a video camera from your laptop or even one of those uh, uh, ones on the side. One of the things that's interesting Excuse me. <clears throat> um, HDMI video from a video camera or sometimes your digital SLR does not translate directly into your laptop. Uh, and so there's what's called an HDMI video capture device uh, that you may have to get. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Your laptop has to be really good or else you get herky jerky video uh, sound that goes away. Uh, and that kind of stuff. One of the things that we experienced and learned very quickly is having USB 3.0 ports or a USB-C Thunderbolt uh, port, which is preferred. Um, so anybody that, that is providing the laptop and that kind of stuff may, should probably know what those are. And the other thing that because we have the background noise in the Waikiki Yacht Club, we uh, got a, a microphone for the laptop uh, that provides the sound to the people that are on Zoom with an on-off switch. And the on-off switch allows us to mute the sound, the background noise from the Waikiki Yacht Club 
uh, into the Zoom meeting. And so for uh, like you folks on Kauai, you may experience kind of the same thing. So we have a video camera and you can see this in the upper uh, right hand corner and it goes to a Magewell HDMI capture device and it feeds directly into my laptop. Now we run, we have the capability of running our meeting from a singular laptop rather than having two laptops. Although uh, Thursday night, we did do a program where the speaker was via Zoom and we controlled everything else via my laptop. Normally somebody plugs in their thumb drive into my laptop and we control the uh, uh, PowerPoint projection and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. which provides uh, video into a 65 inch video mm -hmm. monitor. The Waikiki Yacht Club has their own PA system for in-person experience. Uh, so the microphone goes into a mixer and it mm -hmm. broadcasts into the room. Mm -hmm. We also went out recently and because of the Wi-Fi problems in the uh, in the room, we purchased a uh, Insego M2000 uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, which is 5G capable, mm -hmm. and it is uh, through T-Mobile. Uh, it costs us about $50 a month to have that, but it provides dedicated Wi-Fi wherever we meet, so we don't have to rely on external sources for Wi-Fi. Um, we do have two people, as mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. One operates the camera and one operates the laptop. If you have a second laptop, laptop you're probably going to need three people. Um, we don't have a stationary camera. We are able to engage people in the room, and it does have Zoom capability. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, when, uh, this is Peter from uh, Rotary Club of Kona. When you have an outside speaker who wants to attend your meeting via Zoom, how do you handle the audio? I don't, I don't see that in that diagram. So when we have an outside speaker, because um, because Zoom is uh, uh, capable through this through the uh, through the laptop, uh, we feed that uh, the um, the video monitor has a, an external speaker. So. We see the we see the speaker on the monitor, mm -hmm. and there we have a uh, a sound bar essentially uh, attached. And the monitor belongs to the Waikiki Yacht Club. We don't tote that around uh, wherever we go, uh, but it has a sound bar, so we get good quality mm -hmm. sound out of the video monitor. Okay, thank you. And we have the we do have the camera, uh, the mm -hmm. capture device, the laptop, mm -hmm. and the uh, Wi-Fi all contained within a single kit that I take home with me after each meeting and bring to each meeting. So you gotta have somebody dedicated to be your Zoom host that keeps that equipment, mm -hmm. brings it back and forth mm -hmm. if you're meeting in separate, uh, separate places. Mm -hmm. But the experience has been much better uh, than what we originally started out with some two months ago, trying to figure all this out. Okay, Wen, really appreciate uh, your contribution there. So uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to um, uh, ask uh, if there's any uh, buddy in the meeting uh, that's, uh, that's in the training today uh, that's running a hybrid meeting that hasn't spoken. I, I'm especially interested in how smaller clubs are doing it. Uh, people like, you know, 20 members or, or less. So uh, is anybody on the call today uh, that is running, uh, currently running a hybrid meeting would like to share how they're doing that. Anyone? Okay. All right. So, um, so here's what let's uh, let's do now. Let's start in um, with some of the some of the questions uh, that people are putting in the chat. Uh, I know as we go along, uh, more questions are going to be uh, coming up in the chat. I'm also going to be calling on some of you a little bit later on in the program. Uh, to really share what your experience is, because um, what I'm seeing, at least out everywhere in our district, is that um, we all kind of learn vicariously, and especially over the last year, uh, where people, you know, when we get into these little breakout rooms, and we're like, okay, well, what are you guys doing? Well, what are you, what are you guys doing? And then we get a chance to share and interact. 
uh, that's basically actually uh, the best learning that takes place in any training that we've ever done. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's start in um, a little bit with the questions. Uh, so Janice had a question about um, how do you incorporate uh, the Zoom members? Uh, can they use the chat? So Brian, I think you already answered that uh, uh, to her on the chat, but go ahead and unmute yourself and and answer. Yeah. That. So um, the 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 Zoom. Uh, member, uh, you know, sort of participation mm -hmm. options uh, in some way is uh, like a lot of the stuff that we're, you know, looking at is uh, mm -hmm. very much dependent on um, what kind of setup you can put in place, you know, depending on how many people you have and, you know, what technology you have mm -hmm. um, to be able to kind of bridge the gap between the, the two sides of the hybrid experience. So, you know, one way that you can manage the chat in Zoom versus the in-person is to have someone in the room who's got a laptop, who's looking at the chat and, you know, shouting the questions out as they come up. Um, that's sort of one way of doing it. Um, you, you can also do something if you've got the technological setup, uh, like we actually did in the, um, the setup that we had last week for our first hybrid meeting, we actually projected in some you know, depending on what we were doing, um, projected like the gallery view from Zoom with mm -hmm. the chat mm -hmm. up on the screen and it was big enough that people in the room could see. Um, and we had the sound set up so that the Zoom sound was actually coming into the room through the sound system. And the speakers, you know, in the room had microphones that were going into the Zoom. So we had sort of a good um, sort of full loop set up mm -hmm. there. Um, which is obviously not something that everybody's going to be able to do. And even we are not going to be able to do in all of the venues that we might use. Um, so in those sort of lower, lower fidelity, lower caliber, lower resource type situations, um, you have to find other more creative ways, you know, sort of the lowest tech solution, like I said, is somebody, you know, maybe on their phone uh, in the Zoom meeting, because you can do Zoom over phone and you can read the chat and you can just shout it to the person at the front of the room. Uh, and then, you know, mm -hmm. say it back into the, the Zoom. It's not an optimal experience, but mm -hmm. it's workable. Okay. Okay, thanks, Brian. Um, uh, Naomi, uh, you can uh, add to that, but um, also I want you to handle this uh, next question, uh, which uh, um, uh, Jessica is asking, uh, are some clubs going to every other week uh, because of a, a declining attendance? So uh, can you, you can add on to what Brian had to say and then, and then take that question. Okay, so the question that Jan had about engaging the Zoom participants is really important because um, if you're on the Zoom, you wanna feel like you're part of the meeting. And so in the diagram that we had, um, the speaker is speaking, speaking into the camera that the Zoom people are seeing. So they feel that they're part of the meeting. I've, I've been to meetings where um, people are in the Zoom and of the audience, people in person are talking to each other and ignoring the Zoom people. I've been to a meeting where people are talking to each other and they have their backs to the, Zoom, the camera. So of course the people on Zoom feel they're not, they're not part of the meeting. So having the camera um, focused on the, the speaker uh, is a good thing. Uh, Metro, they have um, uh, phone, uh, videos on inside the group so that the audience in Zoom can mm. see the people in person. Mm. So they feel like they're seeing multiple views. Um, the downtown club, they, their laptop was um, focused on the speaker and they had a, 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 like a lavalier attached to, is clipped onto the speaker. So the sound is very good. Mm. And then it's plugged into the, um, the laptop. And so the, the Zoom people feel like they're looking at the speaker and they're part of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So people on the Zoom, don't forget that they are part of the meeting. East Honolulu, um, the president, Ashley, would be speaking to the laptop mm -hmm. camera. So people on Zoom feel like they're looking right directly at the speaker, okay? So um, keep in mind the point, uh, the, the user's point of view. So how is the, mm -hmm. uh, the user on Zoom feeling like they're part of the meeting, okay? Um, the next question about um, going to every other week, um, you know, talking to your members about um, Zoom, you really need to take a survey and find out what is uh, working for them. 
there are many clubs who are going to every other week because it's hard to find speakers or it's hard to um, manage the Zoom. Um, so it's got to be what's working for your club. But Rotary does say that you should be meet, meeting a minimum of two meetings a month. Now, other people would say if you do that and not are, are not consistent, you may lose member members because they're not as engaged. So please um, look at what's going to work for your club and what's going to work mm -hmm. for your members. If your president or someone who's running the meeting has a, a bandwidth and they're not able to do weekly meetings, but your club members want to have weekly meetings, maybe you can have other people run the meeting for them. But mm -hmm. think about how the members want to engage and how they want to uh, participate. Now, if you cannot meet every week because of the venue, for some reason, the, the mm -hmm. restaurant isn't going to uh, mm -hmm. allow you to do that. You can always encourage your members to go to other club meetings. And so if you have a good speaker and you send me that information, I will send that out if, if I can. Um, so Mikey Keith, if you send it to me a week in mm -hmm. advance, maybe you can get that inform information out, but encourage mm -hmm. your members mm -hmm. too to join other club meetings because we have really great speakers around the district. Okay, thanks, Naomi. Uh, so next question in the chat. Um, hey, Wynn, I'm gonna toss this over to you because you just uh, covered it, but but Tony's asking, um, how do you attach all these peripherals, mic, camera, projector, all at the same time on a laptop? So, uh, you know, maybe you wanna bring your your uh, <clears throat> uh, visual back, back up again, or, or if you wanna just uh, take that one on and explain it. I can, do, I can do that. Uh, <clears throat> so we have a singular laptop and the laptop, uh, the video monitor is connected via HDMI cable, which almost all modern laptops have is an HDMI out. <clears throat> we also have a, um, uh, the thumb drive plugged into a USB 3.0 port and we have a 3.0 port on, on the other side uh, that we're connected to. Um, and uh, with a um, um, with a microphone, uh, and the microphone has an on-off switch, which is critical. It actually sits on the podium uh, uh, as well. And then we also connect our video camera, which although it's an HDMI out, the the uh, <clears throat> capture device is a USB. So you gotta have, like I say, in the uh, over here in the the, the minimum, gotta have a minimum of two USB 3.0 ports or above. Otherwise, you get uh, herky-jerky sound and video. Um, if, you're, if you can get a laptop that has a USB-C, or it's also called a Thunderbolt port, that is much preferable as the bandwidth between uh, that is a USB 3.0 and USB-C is vastly superior to even a USB 2.0. Did that cover it? <laughs> Yeah, Tony, does that answer your uh, your question? You've got to, okay, Tony's giving us the high sign. Uh, good one. Yeah, I would add to that, Benson, just a quick thing that there are a number of different kind of sort of additional pieces of hardware that you can buy to like fix some limitations on your laptop. Now there are some limitations as, as Wynn alluded to that you know you, you just can't fix and you don't wanna have if you wanna have a good experience. Like if your laptop does not have a strong enough processor or enough memory to do the video processing, whatever, you're gonna get jerky stuff. That's kind of hard to fix. But like if you don't have enough ports of a certain kind on your machine, there are like splitters that you can get to do certain things that you know they, degrade things a little bit, but they allow you to do some things. So I think the key is to kind of assess what you have, see if it's all gonna to fit together and work the way you want it to, mm -hmm. plan and then practice. <clears throat> Those are critical, I think. Yeah, my, <clears throat> that's very, very true, Brian. So my laptop only has two USB ports. It does not have a USB-C. So I have a uh, plugged into one side, I have a USB splitter or a USB hub uh, that allows me to put on the uh, uh, changer for the, uh, um, um, for the PowerPoint and, the, ch and, and the, the microphone and all that's plugged into one side. And then the video, is into a dedicated port. Mm. Okay, thanks, Wynn. Uh, that's a that's a good one. Um, 
so uh, Naomi, maybe back to you. Um, Alan um, is, is asking, uh, could we could we get a club listing of how um, each each club is having, whether they're doing in person Zoom meeting, hybrid meetings, or or whatever, uh, so club members can choose. Okay, on the district website, there is an online meeting and fundraiser tab under our our islands. And in there, it has a listing of all of the clubs. And it's only if I have the information, uh, it lists if you're on Zoom and where they're meeting and what day and time. Okay, but on Club Runner, if uh, your secretaries or presidents can use the Club Runner to update your information, the Club Runner will show what day, time, and how you're meeting. And if you want to put your Zoom code in there or give instructions on how to get the Zoom code, that would be good. So log in to Club Runner, go to Club Info, and you can update your location and how your club is meeting. Okay, thanks, Naomi. Uh, that's, that's a great one. Um, and then Arlene is asking, is there a way to find out uh, what equipment clubs are, are using? She said, um, I bought a lavalier, but uh, didn't work with my computer. So suggestions are appreciated. Uh, so any, anybody want to take that one? Uh, Naomi, do you know what clubs have what? I mean, and that's kind of a tough, tough order, right? To figure out yeah, who has it's, what, it's, right? Yeah, it is hard because sometimes you're using one and, and the next week you're using something else. And so I would suggest Arlene to take your computer to Best Buy or wherever you got your novel <laughs> to ask them to help you because they know what's going to fit and what's going to work. They have tech people there. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank, thanks, Arlene. Um, so, you know, Pete asked a question. Uh, is there anybody in West Hawaii who might be able to be uh, good at uh, helping, our, helping our setup? So uh, this kind of leads me to the, to the um, uh, discussion point of okay, if you're if you're in Maui somewhere or you're on Kauai somewhere, you're on Oahu, West Oahu, uh, Hawaii Island, uh, where where can you go? And I think uh, what Pete's asking is there somebody on our island that can uh, that can help him uh, with the setup with the physical setup. And so I know in our our little committee as we were talking about that. Um, how are we going to help um, individual clubs that have uh, individual situation? Because there's, you know, we have 53 clubs that have 53 completely different situations. And so, um, you know, this is not, uh, obviously not a one situation, one uh, size uh, fits all. So everybody uh, is going to be dis uh, different. So um, <clears throat> uh, Pete, I would, I would uh, tell you basically to um, uh, send us an email, put your contact information uh, out there. And, and maybe it's something like, uh, I think what uh, Brian was saying once in our meeting is that if we could just, you know, FaceTime us and kind of walk through what you've got, and maybe we can give you some input on, um, on how to plug stuff together or what, what stuff that, uh, that you need to, to make it go. Um, I know one of the key elements um, is uh, things you're, you're trying to consider as we we're kind of walking through this. Uh, number one thing I think is venue is where are you, where are you going to have this thing? Because the venue really is going to dictate a lot of um, what you're going to be able to do and, and not do. So if you're in a private venue, great. But if you're in a venue like what Wynn has, where you, people walking through all the time, I mean, it's super difficult to uh, control the quality of the uh, obviously the sound there, uh, the venues also, I mean, where are you going <clears> to <throat> have it is also going to, um, uh, dictate uh, what kind of, uh, internet service you're going to have, if any, um, I think that, uh, that idea of, uh, buying a dedicated hotspot so that you can move the meeting anywhere you want it to go is, uh, is pretty, pretty awesome idea. And then, and then you have to kind of survey, all right, um, so what people do we have in our club, uh, that are tech, technologically uh, minded enough uh, to figure this out that or that want to do that. And obviously what um, what Wynn and Brian and um, even Nathan's saying is that you got to have people uh, consistently like a, a, a tech team uh, that'll take this thing on and want to do it consistently going, uh, going forward. Um, and then third consideration really is 
you know, we've got to figure out what kind of equipment we need. I mean, what do we have? So, like I said, on one end of the spectrum, uh, <clears throat> you know, Brian, uh, Brian and Honolulu Club has a very highly developed uh, system. Uh, you know, uh, Winds Club is, um, they're evolving through that. But then we have, you know, little little clubs that have like 10 people and, and a laptop. So uh, we, we have to try to figure out how to make the full gamut uh, of that work uh, based on their sp specific situation. So uh, if anybody is on the call today that, that uh, is trying to figure out what am I going to do in my specific situation, uh, this will be the time to just kind of raise your hand. I'm going to turn it over to Wynn because he's got his hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so, so Benson, I just wanted to say that one of the things that, that our club is doing is uh, developing teams of two people to do each week, because it's an awful lot to ask somebody to basically give up their meeting every week uh, for a whole year or what, however long that, that you're going to do it, uh, if it's going to be indefinitely, to give up uh, their, their meeting every week. So we're training teams of two people, one to operate the camera, one to, to operate or to manage Zoom, uh, to run it, and we're going to have four teams that rotate and do it once a month. So that might be an, an because it's, this is, can be sound really, really overwhelming to a lot of people. And it's not, it mm -hmm. is not that hard, but get some people that are, that are willing to learn and it's, it's it put together a kit of quality equipment and we can do this. And I would add to that, that it's okay sometimes to acknowledge, okay, for this particular venue, for this particular set of folks that we have available, you know, all of the people who are able to help us do the Zoom meeting are going to be on the mainland that week. So, you know, that week, it's not a hybrid event. It's a only in-person or it's only Zoom. Um, I think that's important to also recognize that sometimes it's okay not to do hybrid, even if, you know, you're trying to get there, or maybe you only do hybrid once a month, or you do a hybrid once a quarter or whatever. Um, you know, do what you can with the resources you have, but then just do it as well as you can. Okay, great. So I wanted to uh, get a kind of a chime in from uh, uh, some of the others of you guys, no matter what you're doing, if you're not doing it, doing it, uh, whatever. So um, I see my pal Carl over here from Y and I on. Uh, Carl, what are you guys doing? What are you guys thinking about doing? Uh, what, what's happening in Y and I? So what we're going to do at this, we're, we're definitely interested in having a hybrid meeting. So it's, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's the other clubs are experiencing this, but for our club, we actually have a, a bunch of members who prefer meeting in person. Yep. And ever since we've gone to this virtual presence, they haven't been engaged. Whereas we had some members who hardly ever attended in-person meetings. And now all of a sudden they're pretty engaged. So we have both sides of the spectrum. So I think having a hybrid type of meeting, and I think Brian, you, thank you for bringing that up. We, we don't have to have a hybrid meeting every meeting. It could be a special occasion, or it could be if there's a speaker on the mainland, but I just think having a hybrid meeting will give us a, a greater opportunity to capture sides who prefer to meet in person as well as virtual. So I think it's definitely a, a huge opportunity and I, and I appreciate everyone for chiming in because uh, mm -hmm. Wynn Win had mentioned that it, it sounds pretty complicated. It, it does, you look at, take a look at the diagram for mm -hmm. someone who's technologically illiterate like mm -hmm. me, but you know, <laughs> just, just uh, being able to run with mm -hmm. it and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, doing our best. So, so at this point, we're definitely interested. We're, we have to go to the location, we have to check out um, what kind of technology mm -hmm. we'll need, but um, you know, that's something that we're definitely going to be incorporating and we're going to do it slowly and we're going to do the best that we can when we yeah. can. Okay, thanks, Carl. And Carl brings up a good point. I mean, there's there's no law out there or anything that says you got to do it a certain way or you have to do it on a certain time schedule. Um, you basically take it at the speed of uh, whatever your, your club wants to, to do. Uh, Vanessa, you, do you have a minute to kind of tell us what you guys are doing over there on Maui? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so we're getting prepared in order to um, start hybrid meetings. Uh, we had our first like in-person social uh, a few weeks ago, which was a really great success. And um, on May 23rd, we're going to be having a, I guess, tech meeting 
where um, Wendy from the Upcountry Club is going to come down, take an assessment of the mm -hmm. type of um, tools that we currently have. Like we have a monitor, we have um, big speakers, we have microphones, and we're just going to see what additional items that we needed. So those, uh, the video that Naomi showed, I took pictures of it. The mm -hmm. diagram that mm -hmm. uh, Wynn showed also took pictures. Um, this is really, really great. Uh, kind of layout for us to mm. go into my uh, technological meeting. So I'm really excited for that. <clears throat> and then I saw there was a, a question in the chat. Um, what are some challenges having a social hybrid and how did you overcome? Well, we haven't had a, a social hybrid yet. We had a, our first in-person meeting um, because we mm. have only had Zoom meetings for the past year. So uh, we haven't tried that yet, but as soon as I get some feedback, I will certainly share, Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> okay, cool, Vanessa. Thanks. Always good to always good to check in with you. Um, so uh, uh, Kona uh, uh, asked the question: uh, How's each? How is each person logged in on each of the three computers? Are they all co-hosts and hosts? So who, want, who wants to take that one? Naomi, I'll, I'll jump unmuted. in on that one. Okay, go ahead. I'll jump in on that one. Yeah, so it, the answer kind of depends on what your setup is uh, designed to do. So again, you kind of want to plan it out. Um, like, for example, in the situation we had last week for our hybrid meeting, um, we had one login to <laughs> Zoom that was just basically, you know, sort of a, a showing what was going on and had no control aspect to it that login doesn't need to be a co-host but we had someone who was you know sort of switching back and forth okay <clears> highlight <throat> this spotlight this view spotlight that view that person needs to be a co-host we had someone who was letting people into the meeting that person needs to be a host or a co-host um, so it depends on what each of the uh, folks are doing um, so like, for example, in the diagram that Naomi, in the video name is Naomi, Naomi showed, um, the Zoom master obviously mm -hmm. needs to be a host or a co-host, but then maybe the president doesn't need to be, maybe the, you know, presenter um, view of the audience mm -hmm. or whatever doesn't need mm -hmm. to be a host co-host, but then whoever's coming in from outside to share, you know, their presentation, they need to be a co-host. So you kind of have to plan that out depending on what your uh, intent is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Naomi, you want to add something to that? Go ahead. We really mm -hmm. highly recommend that the, the presenter is not the, um, not the sole host, that you have co-host to monitor mm -hmm. the sound. If you need to mute someone or kick somebody out or um, <laughs> bring people into the waiting room, but mm -hmm. it is very good to have other uh, people as co-hosts. You always want to remember too that only one should have their their audio on because if you have more than one, you're going to have feedback, and and you don't want to have this all of this noise while you're having the presenter speak. So um, the co-host can see where that um, noise is coming from and mute them. Okay, Janice, you had a question. Benson, I just want to add to that. Okay, I would not recommend ahead. that the president be the be the host or the co-host. Yeah. President's yes. got to focus on the meeting. You got to have somebody else that is the uh, monitoring the laptop, letting people in, and all of that kind of stuff. Don't have yeah. your president be the be the host. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent agree with that. Um, Alan Okinaka, you had a comment, question. Yeah, Benson. Um, about a year ago, we had a birthday party for my auntie, and uh, the configuration that they put together exactly what Naomi presented from the uh, RI resources. There were about 15 people at her home and about 30 people from um, the East Coast uh, to Hawaii, uh, all <clears throat> coming in by Zoom. And the configuration is very, very simple and it works. Uh, the video camera was stationary because it just showed 15 people. Whoever spoke up uh, became the, um, the uh, what do you call, you know, the highlight was the screen. <clears throat> uh, they had, um, my cousin was the president, sort of. Uh, he's the guy that kind of facilitated the whole meeting. So that would be an AKA, mm -hmm. the president. Uh, his daughter was the Zoom master. Uh, she's the one that uh, initiated the video and the slide presentation, uh, things like this. Um, 
So it doesn't have to be so complicated or like what Wynn has. Uh, it can be very, very simple. And what the RI people have put together is exactly what I had described to our club that could work. Um, it, it's a very simple configuration. All it is is, um, you know, that the Zoom connection is like a person coming into the meeting uh, in the root house. And the people in the house are, is another person on the Zoom meeting. Uh, as simple as that. There's no bandwidth problem or anything like that. Uh, well, they were using a hotspot on their iPhone because they didn't have Wi-Fi at uh, my auntie's house, but uh, it worked really well. We went for two hours. It's very enjoyable. Everybody got to say what they wanted to say to her, to congratulate her and everything like that. 92 years old, so there was a lot of things to say to her. So um, I, I wouldn't be discouraged by you know, HDMI and USB-C and all this kind of stuff. All, all you gotta do is follow RI's uh, configuration. It really works, it works well. Agree. Okay, thanks a lot, Alan, that's, that's awesome. Uh, Kurt, did you wanna add anything to that? No, no, I just- While I you're just unmuted? What... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go, go for it, bro. <laughs> okay, all right. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, yeah, no, you're, okay. you're, you're good. Right. Okay, no, I, I, I support what Alan just said. Uh, I, uh, I chimed in uh, about 10 minutes after nine, but I was listening to and looking at the diagrams and I said, I was thinking about um, some of the old days um, in my past where we had some significant um, uh, implementation of programs and applications on a, on a regional global basis. And um, um, we didn't have Zoom in those days, so I'm, I'm, I'm marking myself as an older fellow. But anyway, um, the simplest, I, I remember the initial, initial um, attempts were extremely complicated and expensive. So everybody said we had to have the most expensive equipment and, you know, we had to have all these different connections and et cetera. And what it boiled down to was something that came out, it was very, very simple, you know, something like Alan just said, um, indicated. So I think, if, I think if we keep this simple and, you know, and I'm not a technical person, so I don't know what tech, I don't know what simple really is in our, in our situation. I do know that we, we have a couple of objectives here which we should focus on and that should determine what, what the direction is of, of RI. And, and one is, is the, the biggest thing is people are itching to get back and meet. You know, I know our club is, um, Hilo Bay. Um, we're looking forward to actually having a physical gathering. Um, but we know that there are also people that can't make the physical gathering, so they need to be involved with it too. So we should make every effort for them to be mm -hmm. in on the gatherings too, mm -hmm. from a Zoom standpoint, from a streaming standpoint. So those yeah. are those mm -hmm. are the, the, the primary objectives. The the third one that's that's come up here, which which I didn't think about before, is clubs that have the capabilities mm -hmm. of, of putting on larger venues, if you will. Um, um, if other clubs can join in, that's that's a benefit as well. You know, so what we might see is clubs then becoming more inclined to um, interface with other clubs more than they do now. So that yes. could be a benefit right there. Yeah. Uh, Great, Kurt. Yeah. Thank. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I I want, also want to um, uh, bridge something that uh, that's appeared in the uh, chat over here. Um, and uh, Brian, I want you to comment on this or anybody else who's, who's doing this. Uh, you know, we're going to have an induction ceremony f uh, for our incoming uh, president, um, Keith Greer. And so besides running it on Zoom, we also wanted to uh, put it out on Facebook Live. And so um, now I don't know if uh, most of you guys understand how that works, but but you can broadcast it out there so that other people can watch the meeting that, you know, are not in your club or in your Zoom, if you want to do that, if you have a, like a public facing event. So, um, you know, Brian, you want to take a minute or so and just kind of describe how that works. Sure. And actually, I, I'm glad that you brought that up, um, 
Benson, because the, 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 the kind of experience that you're looking for with something like a Facebook Live or like, you know, think of it like a television broadcast or something like that um, is sort of a different kind of desired experience if you're doing it well um, than a Zoom meeting. Because in a Zoom meeting, the expectation I think a lot of people have is that if it's, do, if it's done well, you know, there's sort of a two-way you know, you can interact in and you get interaction out, whereas something like a Facebook live feed um, or, you know, like a television broadcast, really, you're just kind of expecting to sit and watch and you want the camera angles to be handled well, you want the sound quality to be good. So there are still things that are important for something like that. And I know even in the before times, I had been to a couple of club meetings from, you know, in other parts of the country where they were doing something, say, with Facebook Live, where they essentially stuck an iPad way back in the far corner, you know, that you could see the entire room. Um, but you almost couldn't see what was going on. You mm. really couldn't hear anything. And that was their sort of hybrid experience. That's kind of what I think you want to avoid when you're doing something like that. So if you have, you know, a hybrid experience that's not a Zoom part, but is more like a Facebook Live type thing, you want to think about mm. that in terms of what makes that kind of experience good for those people who are watching, you know, having someone carry an iPad around so that you can see people close up or making sure that you've got a good quality microphone that's attached to something that, you know, feeds into the Facebook Live device that's, that's feeding that out. Um, and then practice it a couple of times in the place where it's going to be. Like one of the things that, that we talked about when we were setting up the, the, the hybrid meeting for Rotary Club of Honolulu last week is that, you know, these experiences that some of us have had with other groups where, oh, it worked just fine in the office, but then we took it down to the place where the meeting was happening and there was, you know, a huge tower for the television station next door that made it impossible for the systems to talk to each other and it didn't work oh, well, I needed to have RF shielding or whatever it was, right? So if you want to make sure that it's going to work mm -hmm. in the situation with the uh, setup that you have and you can practice it, then I think you have a much mm -hmm. better chance of success for, for any of them. Mm -hmm. okay. Just to piggyback yeah. on top of what Brian just said, I think sure. we must remember that oftentimes we're going to have uh, guests or prospective members on Zoom and so they that may define to them uh, what their experience is of your club and whether they decide to join your club or not. And so if you have one of these one way mm -hmm. conversations with them and they have no, they're not really experiencing your club, I mean, that that that's one of the things that the feedback that we got early on where we kind of had that experience was that that was not a, a, a what they what people were looking for. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, and uh, that's a that's a great point. Um, uh, so, uh, Naomi, I wondered if you could uh, handle Lynette's question about um, how often is it recommended uh, changing the Zoom link? I know for our club because we can never remember the link. We've had the same link for the entire year, so maybe, maybe we need to change it like our passwords or something. Go ahead. Uh, well, I think uh, Brian said uh, every six months. <laughs> That you, Brian, every six months. Um, but it is a good mm. thing to change it every once in a while so that you don't get the codes out there and get an intruder. I have heard stories of horror stories of people intruding and playing and getting um, cold of the screen share and playing some very offensive um, videos. So you want to just try and <laughs> protect yourself. Just know that Zoom. Um, if you don't have a password, you do need a waiting room. You have to have one or the other. And, and that is one way that you can um, determine you know, who's coming into your, um, your room. But that's why you need a, um, other co-hosts so that someone is watching out for um, those intruders or noise that comes in. But mm -hmm. um, changing the code too often is not good because then people are going to say, well, where's the code? I can't get in. Or then they say, well, I couldn't find the codes. So I'm not I'm not joining you. So it really depends mm -hmm. on how you communicate. Yeah. With the yeah, we, we did have that experience initially when we did the first code change. We had a number of people who were like, oh, I can't get in. Oh, I, so, you know, we're texting back and forth. People are calling other people, messaging, however, you know, to get them in. And then, you know, the next couple of times it, it went better. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kurt, you have a question. Go ahead. You got to uh, unmute yourself. Okay. There you go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, 
Um, Facebook, why Facebook? Just a question. Uh, well, some sometimes when people are doing uh, more, it's more for like public events. So let's just say you're going to do do like a fundraising or something where you don't really need uh, that much interaction, like uh, to Win's point, um, you know, it, it won't work if you're expecting your audience to uh, uh, to be interacting with you. But if you just want to put an event out like, um, you know, we're, we're going to put a fundraising out or or some uh, uh, type, type of public event where you just want the public to watch it. Then, uh, then face Facebook might work. Okay, got gotcha. you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hi, Benson. <clears throat> yes. This is Conrad from Rotary Club of Alamoana. Sorry, my video yeah. is off on yeah. my car. Go ahead, um, Conrad. I, I just wanted to uh, 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 comment about the Facebook Live. You know, um, in real estate, uh, uh, during the early uh, time of the pandemic, um, a lot of realtors were doing uh, um, virtual open houses. Uh, because you can uh, have an in-person open house. Um, but the experience uh, for these uh, virtual open houses uh, run the gamut. But those who did it well on Facebook Live did it where they had uh, a moderator uh, that was with them so that mm -hmm. they are engaging the audience through the chats and things like that. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want people to, to, to take away from the fact that uh, Facebook Live is only for... Uh, mm -hmm one type of experience. You can make it an engaging experience if you uh, have other people uh, participate uh, in, uh, in putting off the, the virtual experience uh, via Facebook Live, uh, because the engagement aspect is very important. So in other words, people that are uh, dialing in onto their uh, Facebook to watch the event live, mm. whether it be a, a club meeting or a, a fundraiser event or something like that, um, you need to have moderators that are uh, mod uh, monitoring for the chats and uh, and things like that, uh, that that are coming through. That's how you're going to improve the uh, uh, user experience. Okay, thanks, Conrad. Uh, thanks for chiming in there. Um, so our friends at the uh, Rotary Club of Kona want to throw out a scenario to get some uh, tech equipment um, input on that. So go ahead. Thank you. So our club um, already has a projector screen. Um, we have two speakers and we have two microphones that connect to the speakers via a receiver. So they're wireless so the president can have one and then we can roam the room with the other. So we just started having our first meeting Thursday. Th Thursday. Um, it's obvious our club members <laughs> prefer to meet in person, but we still want to be able to do hybrid because as you say, our speakers um, are coming up and they can only join us by Zoom. So our complication is at this point, using our two speaker, or just, sorry, our two microphones with our receiver and doing the Zoom from my computer for that speaker, which we already know how to connect to our, our projector, but how am I going to get that speaker and use with that, um, receiver and those microphones use it um, with my computer and get that speaker to be able to be heard. I kind of looked a little um, investigation and we were thinking maybe just a, um, a splitter, but I kind of read the splitter is not good and it's kind of looking like we might need an audio switch box and then maybe a ground loop <laughs> isolator for noise. Am I on the right track? <laughs> Brian, go ahead. You want to answer her? Uh, well, actually, I would I would probably mm -hmm. defer more to Win and his experience because it sounds like he's had a, a bit more mm -hmm. uh, experience with sort of you know those kinds of of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like uh, you're on the right track for the kinds of things that you're looking at, and it sounds like you are getting mm -hmm. some reasonably good advice because like when you take a signal that mm -hmm. has a certain amount of power and you split it into two, each of those is obviously going to be a little less powerful unless you've got amplifiers and you know there's there's ways to get around all of those problems and issues but you have to be aware that they're a problem and you have to then know how to fix them and if you don't have the background in you know electronic engineering or whatever which by the way is a side I don't um, I just know people who I can ask questions of um, you know it's, it's difficult to solve those things uh, without 
the the understanding of what you need to do. So it's it's a little intimidating, um, but you're 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 making the right kinds of investigative moves there, I think. And I think that as we sort of figure these things out club by club, sharing the experience across the district is probably going to be quite valuable. Um, you know, and there are going to be challenges that not all of us are going to face. Like you know, I know in some of the out country locations mm -hmm. the, the the wi-fi and the internet connection is much less and so maybe you do things where there's not a video feed you only have the experience of audio you know those are the kinds of things that you might want to consider and then when it comes to things like how do you connect your in-person microphone together with your in-person projector together with the zoom audio and visual experience mm -hmm. um, again there are ways that you can set that up so that it will work but it often requires mm -hmm. understanding okay i have to turn this thing off when i turn this thing on and then you know everything will work and so mm -hmm. set, planning it out setting it up and trying it mm -hmm. in advance and then practicing it is mm -hmm. i can't emphasize enough how useful that is yeah you want to add something to that win so I, I can add a little bit, but without seeing the system and what you're using, it's kind of hard to tell. Mm -hmm. So there are two different ty kinds of mm -hmm. sound systems that you that are in use. One is a mm -hmm. powered system and one is an unpowered system. Uh, the unpowered system has an amplifier that's actually in the speakers. Uh, a lot of those are like what we see uh, connected to laptops mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, even though they can be, I, I have huge speakers that, that uh, use that or you run your microphone mm -hmm. into an amplifier and it has channels and it has all the stuff uh, connected mm -hmm. to it. <clears throat> so that really determines what you can connect and what you can't mm -hmm. connect and what the connectors are on the outside of the speakers or if they even have connections. So what I'll suggest is that we connect offline um, and we can maybe FaceTime and look mm -hmm. at the, the equipment that you have uh, I don't know of anybody on the Kona side <clears throat> that has uh, uh, experience in sound systems. Uh, I have limited, but no enough to be dangerous. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, da dangerous is good. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I want to kind of go back to something uh, that Vanessa said, they're going to start a hybrid meetings. And um, so Wendy Hornack is coming down from a, a, a different club. Uh, to help them get it set up. So um, to the extent in which we can share resources, especially in the clubs that are that are nearby us, um, if if you guys can, those of you guys that are that are knowledgeable, and uh, those of you that are still trying to figure out a, a way to do this, uh, reach out to the clubs that are around you. Uh, maybe you go to your assistant governor and say, hey, I, you know, we're trying to figure this out. Is there anybody else that's nearby us? It's got this thing, uh, you know, more wired than what we've got, so that uh, you know they might be able to come into our club and and help help us. So, uh, part of, part of the whole scenario that we're talking about uh, today is is re really how we help ourselves because there's enough knowledge uh, within this group, just the people that are um, that are on this call, uh, where we could really we could really help uh, advance uh, any club, uh, whatever the situation is. So. Uh, we're winding down actually to the last few minutes of it. If you guys have uh, uh, any more tech scenarios that you want to help help with, put it in the chat. We'll try to just uh, address that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to turn it back over to Naomi now, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, where our eyes coming from. And then um, Naomi, while you're on, maybe you can address uh, uh, Jessica's uh, question about does Rotary have a database of recorded speakers that we can choose from uh, if we don't have the speaker? So I'll turn it over to you. Okay, uh, I'll answer that question first. And I think that's Bill. Or is oh, it okay. Just, uh, anyway, um, on the district website in the um, our service tab, there's a speakers bureau list of about 50 um, speakers and some of them are national. Uh, but we can also put in the recordings if you have a 